up to let us know that you're conscious, that you are aware. Okay. You will look at your ripcord. It'll be on the right-hand side on your harness. I'll put a harness on you and put a ripcord in there and show you what it's like. The hardest thing is pulling the handle out of the pocket. Actually releasing the drogue is the easy part. And it takes about three pounds of pressure to pull that handle out of the pocket. There's nothing to it. So you give me a thumbs up. You'll look at that ripcord. You reach for it with the right hand. Now, if you just leave your left hand hanging out there, we're going to go into a spin. Ow! <laughs> now we're asymmetrical. Sanctuary. I uh, come into Paris when I come in through the front gate. It's kind of an escape mechanism for me. I have a pretty high pressure job. I uh, really have two jobs. I a university professor. I'm also a reserve officer in the United States Marine Corps. And so when I get to Paris, it's like I'm, I'm safe. And uh, I can do a lot of things that uh, I normally wouldn't do in my civilian career or in the military. And for me, it's a place, it's an escape mechanism. Ooh, baby. Ready, set. Basically, skydiving falls in the realm of risk recreation. Risk recreation are those activities where you say, how ready are you to die today? Uh, we could compare it to rock climbing, soaring, hang gliding, those kinds of activities, where there is the constant risk. Uh, hey, let's face it, there's not a hell of a lot of chance to go out here and play softball that you're going to get killed unless somebody beats you to death with a bat or with a bad call. This is an activity where you enter an environment where there is the possibility of physical injury or death on every jump that you make. It's just part of the activity. And the thing about skydiving that's different, I think, than any other activity is that there are some clear-cut decisions to be made. And if you cannot make those in a high-stress environment, you better go play racquetball. <laughs> annual 20-way move. That's some, it's something that I dreamed up three years ago. I felt that we've got, we've got these airplanes out here, twin otters, that carry 21 people, 20 people and a cameraman. Perfect amount. And what we were seeing is local jumpers were not very competent at building large formations fast. We got a couple real good things. Uh, we got weather. You can see the severe sun coming down. It's the end of November and it's nice. We also got airplanes, lots of them. Skydivers go where there's airplanes. We've got lots of twin turbines. Airplanes can carry great amount of people up and down. That combined with the weather. In fact, we have a swimming pool, gear store. Makes it a mecca, a haven for skydivers. There's an enormous amount of talent here at this drop zone. Um, both the people who are really established as the sky gods, um, most of them are still jumping, do you think? You know, as long, you know, as long as you don't have a commitment to do something else. All right, you guys ready? Set, go. Right. Take the grip. And, and it should go up a little bit, a little bit of an angle. Okay. Straight up and down, it's real hard. Okay. It depends on the And also there's, there's an enormous reserve of, of, of unrecognized talent.
two people can be doing crew together and be extremely unsafe, even though it's just the two of them. But James has taught me everything I know about the crew. I had done but a couple, like one down plane before and one stack. So um, it's been a real learning process for me. you need to be have the finesse and if uh, a woman can give she can cross both paths if she can be aggressive and have the finesse side normally they're they far and above reach what the, the male is capable of doing in the sport a lot of the women in the sport are probably some of the best skydivers because of flexibility but because there's a higher percentage of men there are more of them that are at a different level and they, they step through everything and they hard to say. They step through and, and open up the road to, for the advancements in the sport for us. I want to go to the Olympics for skydiving. That'd be great. And I think that's another goal I need to, which is in the future. And I think the fact that it will do nothing but really help the sport. I think the Olympics and skydiving, I mean, you saw the summer 88 one was kind of made me go, oh, I do that. That's me. You know, one of the more, 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 more prestigious among the regular communities. again and the equipment that we're using with accelerated free fall and the rap rapid rate of progression that people are exposed to it's the only way to do it at this time and plus it's the safest there's no doubt we have several built-in safety features including the instructors uh, automatic activation devices and even a couple other backup systems and so on which makes it one of the safest if not the safest training programs available
left, 90 degrees. Hard as you can. Come on, turn left. Very good. Okay, turn left and face the target now. Turn left and face the target. Okay, on my command. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Here we go. Flare. Flare hard. Flare hard. Very good. Safe. Good for you. Okay, wait right there, Dan. Don't move. Don't move. Just stand right there. Biggest video game in the world. <laughs> For the first time in my life. It's fun, huh? It's incredible. And then you get one of these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right right back on. the truck, Dan. Right here. Good for you. Thank you. That's That's great. Dynamite, man. Congratulations. All right. Oh, Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> I liked it, huh? Yeah. That's that was fun. fun. That's a character. Good. Good. That's that's really fun. Fun. Right. Thank you very much. God bless you. Well, I got you guys you. ready? We're all set. <laughs> all right, hang on. I started jumping when I was 18, and uh, it's one of these activities. It's very, uh, I wouldn't say it's risky business, but uh, it does give a person, uh, you know, not to say if somebody doesn't have any confidence to start with, but it does, success in skydiving does give a person a, a lot of confidence in their abilities to do things. And uh, if you can skydive, you can uh, you know, do a lot of other things. Wow, I mean, if I can do this, you know, I mean, it's at least it's, uh, it's a personal fulfillment. Mom says if she didn't have a heart condition, she'd do it. No, she says, if I didn't have a heart condition, girl, I'd be up there. She's been out here once to, to watch us. Um, my dad, every time he calls, he says, well, well girls, um, you shouldn't drive your car that far every weekend. It could break down and you should give up the sport. Or... And he's also a pilot, so most pilots don't jump and it's crazy. Why would anybody jump out of a perfectly good airplane? But, but he accepts it. He doesn't talk much about it. He accepts it. I see us having more fun getting the most out of our ride to altitude because that's going to keep getting more expensive. Fuel's going to get more expensive. We're running a fossil fuel sport and we're, we're paying for that. So we're going to have to make the most of our expensive ride. And I think we're going to see getting more and more out of the free fall time and getting more and more out of the canopy time. Just enjoying it. It turns out to be a lifestyle. It sounds corny, but you watch the skydivers, you watch them out here, and what they do is skydive. You work to play. You don't play to work. And that's what we've got people out here doing. They they want to jump. They want to learn better. Whether you have three or three thousand jumps, you're learning on every skydive. There isn't an upper limit.
skydiver, I think it's very possible to be in love, uh, but she has to be very understanding. The understanding extent when it's Saturday morning and uh, it's beautiful sunshine, that it's 7 o'clock in the morning, that the, the thing to do is, is, is that, you know, I care about you and, and I wouldn't want anything else to, to stand in our way here, darling, but uh, as I get my rig on and go out the door, if you'd like to come with me, you certainly can, and I would love it if you came out, you know, but um, I'm not going to spend this morning, this particular one, with you. I used to have a girlfriend that skydived. I don't think I want one anymore. They're kind of uh, hard sometimes on the drop zone, if you, especially if you got a real cute girlfriend. You know, you got all your buddies always moving in on her all the time in the drop zone. So I always thought the best thing to have is a girlfriend that didn't jump. You can leave her at home all the time because she doesn't want to come hang around the drop zone all day. I've been in a relationship for two years with a whoopo. Well, he actually made two static lines or something like that. He got me into this. He dared me. And, um, He's totally understanding. He, lets, he has no complaints about me coming out here on the weekends. He, he knows I love to do it, and we see each other, you know, during the week or when I get home from skydiving. And he's really supportive and wishes me luck, and that's it. I go. Thank you.